Hey everyone, I hope you're doing well today. In this video, we're going to talk about histograms. Not Instagram, but histograms. Now, histograms look like bar graphs and group numerical data into bins and intervals. Now, just so you know, histograms look like bar graphs and basically just group numerical data or data that consists of numbers into these intervals or so-called bins. Just for reference, this is what a typical bar graph looks like, and just keep in mind that histograms look like these, but they're not. It's important to know that we use histograms for showing the shape or distribution of a data set. And to refresh your memory on the three distributions that we've looked at in the past, we have symmetrical, left skewed, and right skewed. The essential question we're trying to answer with histograms is how often does data fit into specific ranges? And by ranges, I'm referring to these things called bins or intervals. Here's an example of four little ranges or four bins or intervals. Notice how each of these mini ranges or bins or intervals are all the exact same size in terms of how many numbers fit inside them, and they don't overlap at all. Notice how when the first bin ends with 9, the second one begins with 10, and when the second one ends with 19, the third one begins with 20, and when the third one ends with 29, the fourth one begins with 30. Once we establish our intervals, we then want to see how often numbers will fall inside of them. For example, if we had a data set that had 8 numbers that were between 0 and 9, they would all go in the first category. If we had 4 numbers that were between 10 and 19, they would go into the second one. 5 numbers that were between 20 and 29 go in the third one. And 7 numbers that were between 30 and 39, they would all fit into this last bin. The bins that have more numbers in them have a higher frequency, and the bins that have less numbers have a lower frequency. To understand in the big picture how you would use histograms, first we would ask a statistical question, then we would collect data on that, third we would then make a frequency table to organize our information into intervals, and then fourth and finally we would be able to make a histogram. These would be the four steps we would do in order. For example, a statistical question is how many Takis can each student eat in two minutes? Then suppose a bunch of students stepped up and these were the number of Takis they all ate in two minutes? Following, we're going to create a frequency table, and typically we want 4 to 5 intervals, if not more, so we have 6 here, and that's pretty good, and we're going to see how many students fit into each of these intervals for how many Takis they eat. Once you tally up each of the students that fit into each of the intervals, you can count the tally marks and write the frequency. Using our frequency table, we always put the intervals along the x-axis and the frequency along the y-axis. These are the four steps we want to follow to create a histogram. If you feel like the video is making sense so far, or you're learning something, feel free to give the video a like if you want to. I encourage you to grab some paper, something to write with, and let's do some math together. Let's try this problem here. 24 different students took a science quiz and they received the following scores. Here they are to the right. So we already have our statistical question and we have our data collected, so let's make a frequency table and then make a histogram. Let's start with the frequency table. For the first column on the left, we're going to create some intervals that are all the same size and don't overlap at all. While you do have some flexibility, we typically want to create between 4 and 6 intervals. As long as you make sure there's at least one data point in the first and the last interval, you're good to go. Once you've created intervals that have at least one data point in the first and last interval, we're ready to go ahead and make some tally marks. Now it's time to go through each of the students' scores and sort them into the scores that they got or into their intervals. Hopefully it doesn't bother you too much that one of my intervals from 85 to 94 kind of has this high frequency that spills over into the column to the right. Not a huge deal, but maybe in the future I should have made this tally column a little bit wider so I could fit all my tally marks. Once you have your tally marks, you're just going to add them up together and write how many that you see. This will be our frequency. Remember that the intervals is going to be along the x-axis and the frequency is going to be along the y-axis. Now let's start putting together our histogram. Throw on a title for the histogram, something super creative like, uh, I don't know, quiz score. Label the x-axis as the scores, those would be our intervals, and our frequency, or the y-axis, we can label as the number of students. Go ahead and write in each of your intervals along the x-axis, and then just make sure you space out the frequency high enough to account for your highest frequency. We can see that there was one student that got a score between 45 and 54, so go to that interval along the x-axis and draw a bar up to 1 for the frequency for the number of students. There were 0 students that got between a 55 and 64, so don't worry about drawing a bar here. 
There were two students that got between a 65 and 74, so draw a bar that goes up to 2. There were five students that got between a 75 and 84, so draw a bar that goes up to 5 here. There were 12 students that got between an 85 and 94, so draw a bar up to 12. And for our last interval, there were four students that got between a 95 and 104, so draw a bar up to the 4 on top of this interval. Here's where the scores ended up, and here's where the frequencies ended up. Looking at the shape of this distribution, we can see that it is left skewed. Because the distribution is left skewed, it means that the students generally did quite well on this quiz. While the lowest frequency, or the least amount of students, got between a 55 and 64 since no students did, the highest frequency was between 85 and 94 because there were 12 students that got scores in that interval. Just another couple thoughts here, when you're looking at a histogram, you can see which interval the median is in, but you cannot see which interval the mean or the mode is in. And there you have one full example so far where we had a statistical question, we then collected data, after that we filled in a frequency table, and then finally, we made a histogram. Let's try one more example together. Imagine we asked a statistical question and we collected some data and we found out the number of free throws that students made in 60 seconds. These are all the number of free throws that each of the students made in 60 seconds. Let's now take all of this data and organize it into a frequency table. Just like the previous example, I'm going to create six intervals again. I'm going to make sure that they're all the same size and there's no overlapping and that there's going to be at least one tally in the first interval and at least one tally in the last interval. Then we're going to go ahead and sort all of our data into each of these intervals by using tally marks. And after that, we're just going to count up all the tally marks to write the frequency for each of these intervals. Now that our frequency table is complete, let's go ahead and work on our histogram. Here's an amazingly creative title of free throws, and we can go ahead and label the x-axis or intervals as free throws, or the number of free throws, and then along the y-axis, or the frequency, we're going to call this the number of people. Let's go ahead and write each of our intervals in from left to right along the x-axis, and then write our frequency numbers along the y-axis up and down. 11 students made between 0 and 3 free throws, so we're going to draw a bar up to 11 over that interval. There were 10 students that made between 4 and 7 free throws. There were 3 students that made between 8 and 11. There were 2 students that made between 12 and 15. Only 1 student made between 16 and 19 free throws. And only 1 student made between 20 and 23 free throws. Looking at the shape of distribution here, we can see that we have a right skewed shape. Most students weren't able to make many free throws, which is why most of their data is on the left side. And just to remind you once more, when looking at a histogram, you can see which interval the median is in, but you cannot see which interval the mean or the median is in. And that wraps up a full second example on how to create a frequency table and histogram when given a statistical question and a set of data. If you found this video helpful, feel free to give it a quick like, and as always, keep up the great work, and I'll see you in the next one.